Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sophie, this is Jackpot Comic Talks, and today I have a super exciting video for you guys. I am gonna be telling you all about meeting Frank Miller at this year's Fan Expo Chicago. So let's get into it. All right, so first off, um, I just want to say this is either going to be a very easy video for me to make or it's going to seem heavily edited to you guys because I do sometimes have a tendency uh, to start telling a story and then halfway through remember I've forgotten an important detail in the beginning and then I'll go back and tell you that which will remind me of another thing and I'm not the greatest storyteller, I'll be honest. I get distracted with the details. So if it seems heavily edited, it's just because I'm clipping parts and making it to where it'll make sense for you guys and it's not so wordy. But anyway, so like I mentioned, um, I got to meet Frank Miller um, at this year's Fan Expo Chicago Comic Con. Um, back in August and let me tell you it was one of the best experiences of my life. It was incredible. So first off um, I'll put some pictures over here. I cosplayed um, as both Raven uh, for this Comic Con and also as Mary Jane. Um, I did her very first appearance, um, that first panel that she appears in, and then for Raven I did one based off of um, her look in the Teen Titans 2003 cartoon because I also got to meet Tara Strong. I also painted a picture for her to sign. I'll also put that over here. She was super cool, loved meeting her, um, and that's why I did the Raven cosplay. Um, I cosplayed Raven before, but this was the first time doing that version. And then, like I said, I did the first appearance, MJ. I'll put that right here. Um, and that was so fun. Again, the first time I cosplayed as that version of Mary Jane, I, previous to that, had done her um, more modern look. Um, it was like a different wig, and it was the spider heart shirt. Um, but I definitely loved the first appearance one. That was super fun. And, you know, people seemed to love it, which was really cool. But anyway, the reason you're watching this video, um, me and my dad um, got VIP tickets to a panel for um, the, oh, I forget which anniversary it was, uh, for 300. Now, I will be upfront uh, with you guys. I have never read the comics uh, nor watched the movie for 300. Uh, don't come at me. Um, I will get to it eventually. Um, but I didn't really before the Comic Con. I was so busy like making cosplays and stuff and getting stuff ready. I didn't really have time to sit down and watch it um, or like read it in full. Um, so I plan to do that eventually so I know what was going on in this panel that I was at. But I was really there uh, to meet Frank Miller because that is the you know, like opportunity of a lifetime. I'd be a fool to pass that up. So, you know, before the Comic-Con, we bought the VIP tickets. We were super excited about it. Um, but you know, I was also a little nervous because I'm meeting like a comic book legend here. <laughs> I'm, I'm going into this thinking, you know, well, what if he's in a bad mood and it ruins, you know, <laughs> Frank Miller for me and all the comics and, you know, or what if I, you know, mess up or, you know, just I'm not... Uh, if, if what if I'm nervous in that moment and then it's just awkward and weird so I was a bit nervous going into it um, but we went to this panel um, it was later uh, during the convention I think it started around an hour before the uh, convention closed for the day so we were there pretty late after they'd even closed um, which was great because it meant we all got to uh, really when we were meeting Frank Miller like talk to him and you know I'll get more into that later um so it was it was a pretty big thing um but we get into the room you know we're sitting down and we're you know, we're waiting for Frank Miller to come out um 
Ariel Diaz was also in the panel. I also met her earlier in the Comic-Con and uh, she has a like Venomized Mary Jane cover um, and I had her sign it very unfortunately and I don't know why I forgot to ask her to personalize it so th that was unfortunate but I do have like a signed copy of her book which is pretty cool. And then um, uh, Frank Cho was also in this panel along with Frank Miller. Um, so you know we're waiting for them to uh, get there. You know, me and my dad are just, you know, talking and everything. Frank Miller, Ariel Diaz, and Frank Cho get there. You know, they're going through some, uh, like, preset questions um, for the panel about 300. There's the moderator there, and I forget who it was, but shout out to him because he did a great job moderating this thing. It went so smooth. Um, but they did the, you know, questions that, you know, they ask every time they do this panel at a convention. And then they opened it up to, my, this hair keeps getting in my mouth, oh my goodness. But then they opened it up to, um, like, fan questions. And I will admit, I do have some social anxiety. Um, I don't like just going up and talking to people that I don't know. I, I don't even like ordering food when I go out to restaurants. So I was sitting there and I had a question in mind and I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. It's just not my thing. You know, what if I get up there? They, don't, they probably won't even have time for my question. I'll just have to come back to my seat anyway. You know, and I was wearing heels. I'm like, it's going to be uncomfortable to stand in that line. And, you know, who really even wants to hear my question anyway? What if I get up there and, you know, I trip over my words and I mess up my question and I look like a fool? And then I, th I thought about it again. And I was like, you have the chance to go up in front of Frank Miller and talk to him and ask him a question that you've always wanted to ask him. Do it. So I did. <laughs> I stood up from my seat. I told my dad I was going to go ask a question and I got in line. So I'm you know, in the line. And at this point, you know, the panel had like a set amount of time and I was towards the back of the line. It wasn't super long. It was, I don't know, maybe six, seven people, if I remember correctly. So not super long, but you know, some of the people in front of me had some pretty lengthy questions or multiple questions. So as time is passing on and it's get, getting closer to like the end of this panel, I'm like, oh, see, I was right. I'm not going to get to ask my question. But you know what? It's okay. At least I made an attempt to. And then the moderator um, asks the, uh, you know, like the security people, the staff who works there as well. He's like, is it okay if we just go through this line of questions? Do we have time for that? Is that cool? And they're like, oh, yeah, you're fine. And then I'm like, oh, God. I actually have to go up there and ask Frank Miller my question now. I have no way out. Because if I go sit down now, just because I'm nervous, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. So I have no excuse at this point. I have to stay in line. <laughs> and, you know, people are asking their questions and sitting down and the line is moving up. And that keeps happening. And all of a sudden, it's my turn. <laughs> and let me tell you in that moment, I was freaking out. I, again, like I said, I don't even, I don't even like ordering things at restaurants or, or checking out at stores and stuff like that. I'm just not, uh, I just have a lot of social anxiety when it comes to talking to people. I don't know. Once you get to know me, I'm like crazy extroverted though. So, you know, <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, I get up there to the microphone and I'm like, looking Frank Miller in the eyes. I'm like, oh my god, it's happening. And so I asked him, well, I didn't start with my question. I actually said, you know, because uh, some people, see, again, I'm getting distracted with details. Um, but, uh, you know, some people were asking about 300. But, you know, we were also asking about, like, his Daredevil run and his Batman uh, Dark Knight uh Dark Knight Returns. I wanted to say Rises. That's something different. <laughs> we were talking about the Dark Knight Returns and, you know, other projects that he'd done. Um, and so my question was about, you know, Batman. And so I go up there and I was like, so, you know, I have loved 
reading comics since I was a kid. It's been a part of my life. I've always read them. And as a kid, I got most of my recommendation for comic books from my dad. That's just, you know, that's just how it was. Because with some, you know, comic books and graphic novels, um, you know, they can get very mature. So, you know, he'd read stuff and then just, you know, give it to me if he thought it was cool if I read it. Um, and so I was telling Frank Miller, I was like, you know, my dad will recommend me all of these books. And then I was like, uh, so thank you, dad, for that. And everyone clapped for him. And let me tell you, that was a great moment. Um, to have everyone, you know, like recognize him and for me to be able to, like, thank him for all of that. One of the best parts of that panel. Um, but, you know, and I explained a little further. I was like, one of the books that he recommended to me uh, was The Dark Knight Returns. I was like, it's his favorite graphic novel of all time, his favorite comic book. Um, it is one of my top favorites. I love it. Um, but <laughs> my question is, you know, you created the first female Robin. As a little girl, reading Dark Knight Returns, I'm getting to see a girl Robin. It was such an inspiration for me, especially because, you know, with comics, a lot of the stuff I was reading, it was all about guy superheroes. You know, it was a lot of Batman. Actually, it was mostly Batman that I was reading as a kid and Spider-Man um, and a few others here and there. It was, mo it was mostly male characters. Um, and this was one of the first times I got to see a super cool female hero. And it, it left a lasting impression on me. I mean, she's one of my favorite characters to this day. But I asked him, I was like, how does it feel to have created Carrie? I mean, it, that's got to be so cool. I mean, what is it like to have brought about the first female Robin and a great female character just in general. And uh, so then after that, you know, I, w I was done with my question and, you know, I could breathe a little easier <laughs> and everything. I was like, okay, pressure's off. Now I just have to listen to his answer, thank him, and then go back to my seat. <laughs> so I was relieved at that point. But he had such a great answer. And he, uh, you know, he told me he was like, you know, uh, there's in comics there are some things that are just so obvious that you have to do and he said that when he was writing uh the dark knight returns that um uh he was having a lot of trouble writing robin um you know he just couldn't get it right it was kind of boring it was just very like Ugh. I'm par paraphrasing here. These are not his words. <laughs> like, exactly. Um, but he's like, it was just, I couldn't get Robin right. And he was talking to um, Steve Byrne. Hey, everyone. Um, uh, I'm editing here. I'm actually in my sister's room. Um, but uh, I realized I said Steve Byrne instead of John Byrne. Perhaps I was thinking of Steve Burns uh, from Blue's Clues. Perhaps I was thinking of something else. I don't know why I said Steve. Uh, I meant John. It's a very embarrassing mistake. Uh, but I couldn't let it go. I had to correct myself, so I figured I'd do another video for it. So, yes. John Byrne. Not the Steve guy. <laughs> he suggested, he was like, why don't you make it a female Robin? And it was like, yes, okay that's what's happening and from then on he was like i you know she's become one of my favorite characters that i've written um and you know it it was back in august i don't remember his response like word for word um so i am like paraphrasing it a little bit but his response was just so great um and it was you know it was meaningful and you know to hear him saying all this and Carrie being one of my favorite characters it just it meant a lot it was the single best experience I've ever had at a comic-con and I've had a lot I've only been to three big comic-cons and then like two small ones 
and I've had so many great moments, whether it's meeting celebrities or meeting other cosplayers or, you know, just like making a kid's day because you're dressed as a character that they love. You know, it's all those things. This topped it all. It was amazing. So, you know, he gives his answer and everything. And I'm like, oh, great, thank you and everything. And I, and, you know, I walk back to my seat and I sit down and I like look at my dad. I'm like, oh my God, I actually did that. <laughs> and so um, he, uh, he looks at me and he was like, did you hear what he said, you know, as you were leaving? I was like, no, because I had to walk through an aisle of people. So I was kind of like looking down, focused on not stepping on anyone or anyone's things. He was like, he said that was a great question. And that made my day <laughs> to know that Frank Miller said that I, <laughs> I had a great question for him. <laughs> I'm like smiling and giddy about it now. Oh my goodness. Um, but that was just great to hear. Um, so anyway, um, you know, they finished up with the panel. I was actually the last question. I like closed off, uh, the questions in the panel, which again was kind of cool. Um, and so the, uh, people, um, who were just there for the panel, they left, they, they left, Frank Miller took a break, and then everyone who had gotten the VIP tickets, um, you got some, uh, exclusive stuff, you got, like, a lithograph, um, there was a, uh, um, a special, like, black and white cover for 300, uh, is a variant cover, and then you also got a picture with Frank Miller and a signature from Frank Miller. And so we were waiting for Frank Miller to come back. You know, we were just sitting there chatting, um, talking about the rest of the con and the panel itself. And then he came back and they called us up row by row and the signature was first. So I got a comic sign and it was the uh, Robin 80th anniversary um, comic that they did and it's got a bunch of uh, stories about different Robins um, throughout that 80 years. And I bought it because I was so excited because they had a Frank Miller uh, carry variant cover. And I, you know, bought it with the intention of having him sign it. Even before we got the tickets, I was like, if we get to meet him, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get this so I can get it signed. And um, so I had it and I was like, well, I want to read it first because, you know, once it's signed, I don't want to be like constantly reading it and touching it and, you know, mess something up. So I, uh, I got it and I read it and Carrie Kelly does not have a story in it. I think she is mentioned maybe once or twice in the little, like, they'd have a page and it would have a little bubble with that Robin's picture in it and then a little synopsis about them. I think she has one of those. I think maybe she's mentioned one other time. She doesn't have a story. Dick Grayson has multiple. Jason Todd's got one or two. Tim Drake had a few. Damien had a few. Stephanie Brown had one. Carrie Kelly did not have a story in there. And I wanted to know why. <laughs> She's the first female Roman. She was the third Robin, I believe. I think it was uh, Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and then Carrie Kelly. Um, I know this is kind of like an off story, not in main continuity, um, but like I think in terms of chronological order for us, uh, she was third. Um, so it was really shocking to me that she was left out of the book and I kind of wondered why. Um, but of course, you know, when I was asking my one question, I wanted to ask the question that I asked and I figured, you know, once I have him sign the book, maybe I'll ask him that. And so, you know, me and my dad are up in line, um, people are getting their stuff signed and everything. And it was really great because he was like, you know, talking to everyone and asking or answering questions that they had and everything. And he was so nice. Um, and I was a little bit nervous, you know, I'm like, what if he's not nice? You know, what am I going to do then? I'm going to be a mess. Like, I'm going to be like, I'm so sorry, you know? Um, but he was honestly great. Um, so exceptionally nice. It was amazing. Um, but I get up there and, uh, you know, I, I tell the woman there, you know, I'm having him sign this comic. She's like, oh, great. And then she passes it on to him and it's, you know, got that Carrie Kelly. I'll show it to you in a minute. It's got that Carrie Kelly cover on it. Um, 
and she uh, she sees me and she tells me she's like oh there's your Carrie Kelly fan um, and I was like yes it's me back again and he was like oh great so you know he takes the comic and he signs it and I was like okay I have a question for you he's like all right I was like so I got this cover or I got this comic because you know there's a Carrie variant for it um and I was like I was so excited to read it um but she doesn't have a story in it and I was really confused as to why she had a cover for it but she didn't have a story in it and I asked do you know why that is and he's like signed the comic and he looks up to me, and he looks up at me he's like yeah and so I'm kind of standing there, I'm like can you tell me why? Because I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's not allowed to tell me. You know, maybe there was this whole thing about it. He's like, yeah, I can tell you. <laughs> and so, you know, he told me about, um, he was like, you know, I knew she wasn't going to be in the comic. I was like, okay. Um, and he was like, but, you know, she's my favorite character. And I wanted to put her on the cover. So I put her on the goddamn cover. <laughs> Those were his exact words, <laughs> not mine. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he was like, he, I, I wanted her to have a variant cover. And so she had a variant cover. And you, we were talking a little bit about the book. And, you know, I started to walk away because he wasn't, like, personalizing the signatures or anything. It was literally just his autograph. So you went up there, you got your comic or book or whatever sign you took it you went back to your seat and they were going to do the pictures later so he slides the comic back to me and i go to pick it up and he's like and, I, and i'm as i'm like picking up I'm like thank you so much i mean it was amazing to meet you truly an honor it was it was great and i loved you know thanks for answering my questions i love talking about carrie with you and i you know i start to pick up the comic he's like wait and I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm waiting. I was like, uh, can I personalize that to you? And so I gave the comic back to him. I'm like gonna cry, oh my God. <laughs> and so I gave the comic back to him and he asked what my name was and he um, personalized it and he put for Sophie and then he signed it. best meeting a celebrity moment ever for me um let me hold this up a little bit closer to the camera I want to make sure you guys can see it without too much of a glare um if I need to if it's too much of glare I can't really see right now maybe we'll try this side um I think that's okay if you can't get a clear shot of it I'll probably just put a picture of it uh in front but when he asked me that, when he, he, when I started to take the comic and he was like, wait, can I personalize that for you? I was beyond shocked because like I said, it, he wasn't personalizing signatures that day. It was just an autograph, just his name on whatever you wanted to sign. And that was that. And so the fact that he asked me if I wanted it personalized meant the world. And I will treasure this forever. It is one of my favorite things that I own. I've got a lot of very cool comics. I have, you know, the first appearance of Mary Jane, and I have uh, some other key comics. I'm actually not going to tell you about them. That'll be a different video. I've got three huge keys that I just picked up over the last few weeks, and I've got a bunch of covers that I love and comics that have been gifted to me that mean so much. But that interaction and that moment makes this my favorite comic that I own. It really does mean the world to me. So yeah, <laughs> that's that's the comic um, that I have. And I think for the rest of the video, I'm actually going to, sorry, Umbrella Academy. For the rest of the video, Carrie shall be up here. <laughs> So, um, like I said, um, the panel also, you got, if you had the VIP, you got to get a picture with him. Um, so, uh, me and my dad, it was, you know, like each individual person, but me and my dad were like 
let's draw the picture together, you know? <laughs> um, and so we get up there, we give them our tickets, and we're like, is it cool if we just get one picture with us together? She's like, yeah, totally fine. So we went up there and we we're each, I'll put the picture here, but we're each standing next to Frank Miller and, you know, we were talking to him and it was just so nice. Um, he also signed a um, Batman comic for my dad. I'll put another picture of that um, here. <laughs> um, getting to meet such a like, like I said earlier in the video, such a comic legend. I mean, we got so many great stories from him. We get the Dark Knight Returns from him. He gave us the first female Robin. He was so kind and so nice. And I got to, you know, do all of this and experience all of this with my dad. Um, and it was, it was truly amazing. It was, like I said, the hands down the best experience I've ever had at a Comic-Con. Um, so like I said, it wrapped up kind of late. So after the picture, you know, we all like headed out and stuff. Um, but I tell you what, after that, I could not stop geeking out to everyone who would sit and listen to me talk about it. I was just so surprised because again I went into it thinking you know don't get your hopes up just in case you know if if it isn't a great experience you can't be too upset you know you just gotta you know you know, roll with it but it was so much better than I was expecting and like what my favorite moment at a comic-con my favorite experience with my dad um my favorite comic, one of my favorite pictures I've got. Um, so I just figured that I would um, share that story um, because it means a lot to me and it's so cool uh, to be able to tell it to people who I know will appreciate it. Um, I'm sure some of you guys will, you know, think it's pretty cool as well. Guys, I finished filming this video and then I go to watch the footage and I realize I forgot to mention this. Oh my goodness, what am I even doing? <laughs> At that Comic-Con, I also got to meet Klaus Jansen, who did the illustrations for Dark Knight Returns, and he was so kind as well. It was super awesome to meet him. And I did get a print of one of my favorite pieces of comic art of all time. This is a classic image. Um, and he did sign it, he put to Sophie, Klaus Jansen best. Um, so yeah, I can't believe I forgot to mention it. It's literally right here behind me. Um, but I figured I would uh, tell you guys about that too um, before I forget again. And it goes um, untold. That pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for listening to me ramble on about this. Um, leave a comment below. Maybe if you've met Frank Miller, were any of you guys, I think he went to a several uh fan expo conventions this year so if you guys have met him too for sure let me know i would love to hear what your experience was like or if you've met any other you know uh comic creators i'd love to hear about that as well um but thank you guys for watching remember to like comment share and subscribe um and as always i hope you hit the jackpot with your next comics bye guys